Hallelujah. Hallelujah, saints. I greet you this morning in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ. I thank you for tuning in. Thank you for being here. Today is the day the Lord has made. We will surely rejoice and be glad in it. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. So if you are just joining, I ask that you please share this broadcast. Share this broadcast. Share this broadcast. I'm going to give you 10 seconds to do that. Please share this broadcast. Invite people to join us as we fellowship together, as we break the bread of life, which is the word of God. Hallelujah. I'm giving you 10 seconds to do that. 9, 8, 7, 6, 5, 4, 3, 2, 1. Hallelujah. Once again, you're welcome. This is Apostle Charles Edoze by the grace of God. This is, to me, a very awesome opportunity, a very uh, good and wonderful opportunity to come live to you to be on your screen to share with you the word of god and to encourage someone hallelujah so i'm gonna ask you to please stay with me stay with me today the lord is gonna bless you through the words that he has given his servant to share hallelujah hallelujah once again i am charles Edoze, and you are welcome praise the lord let us pray father in the name of jesus we thank you we give you glory for giving us this opportunity to congregate once again online thank you lord because in all situations you are still god you are the same yesterday today and forever you have given us this day you have made this day possible for us we are so grateful thank you jesus in the name of jesus i give you glory oh god for the word that you've given unto us i pray that as we begin to break this bread of life our souls shall be well nourished and at the end lord your name alone will be glorified in the name of jesus christ amen amen hallelujah everyone you are welcome you're welcome you're welcome you're welcome you're welcome you're welcome praise the lord oh sister edla thank god you are here be blessed a very good morning to you hallelujah the spirit of god is here praise god so i want to talk about praise god i want to talk about um the love of god in our hearts as you can see in the description in the subject of the message this love should not was cold this love should not was cold i know a lot of people who are just passing by might pick interest quickly um, in this subject thinking that it's just the love that exists between a man and a woman a boyfriend and girlfriend and husband and wife uh, although love in its uh, 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 in, in his uh, self is a very good thing love is a very good thing Christ came and he taught us love God demonstrated his love towards us. The Bible says, even when we were sinners, Christ died for us. So the love of God, the love in general, love in general is something beautiful. All right. But today I want to talk about the love of God in our hearts. The love that we had initially, the love that we had the first time we came to know Christ. You see, the love of God in our hearts propels us to live right. The love of God in our hearts is what propels, propels us to live right uh, as we daily approach the end of our journey on earth. The love of God. If you love somebody, you do everything in your power to please them. When you love somebody, you will not want to hurt them. When you love a, a, a person, you will not love, uh, want to love, uh, uh, hurt the person. When you love God, you do everything in your power to please God. You do everything in your power to ensure that God is happy with you in your words, in your actions, and in everything. Just to show God that you love him. You obey his word. You follow the principles of God's word. You read the Bible. You pray daily. You have fellowship with God. But what I see in our world today is that that same love... That same love 
has grown so cold in the hearts of people. What I see all around us today is people don't have the fear of God anymore. This breaks the heart of the Lord. This is the reason why God has sent me with this message. This love should not grow cold. The love that we have, the love that none should separate us from, is what guarantees our place in heaven. The love of God is what will definitely, definitely put us in the right position to be raptured when Jesus returns. Yes, Jesus will come back. I mean what I'm saying. He will come back. He will return. I know a lot of people are saying all sorts of things. A lot of people don't want to hear this message anymore. A lot of people, according to the book of Peter, will become scoffers in the last days. Saying, since the days of our grandfathers, since the time of old, we've been hearing of his return. Where is he? He hasn't returned. Life has continued as usual. Jesus is coming back. Jesus is coming back. And everything going on in the world today confirms the scripture. Everything going on in the world today is a confirmation to the word of God. We are living in the end times. Jesus is coming back. Now in today's message, I'm going to bring to your attention massive backsliding going on right now currently going on massive backsliding and i'm also going to let you know why people are being separated why people are separating from the love of god and again i will tell you uh how you are going to keep the love of god burning how you're going to keep your love towards god burning the book of Matthew chapter 24 verse 12. Listen. Jesus says in the book of Matthew chapter 24 verse 12. He says, And because iniquity shall abound, the love of many shall was cold. Because iniquity shall abound, the love of many shall was cold. Now this is the main reason why people are backsliding. This is the main reason why people are giving up on the church and on the men of God. Yesterday uh, night, late in the night, I made a video and it's right now on my page. And I said in the video that not all pastors are evil. Not all pastors are evil because so many have come out generalizing that all pastors are crooks. All pastors are evil. No pastor should be trusted. Uh, no pastor... Is, is truly called of God. These are hustlers. These are these and that and all of that. People are out there discouraging many from attending church, discouraging many from believing in the, the men that God have uh, that, that God has sent as shepherds and as pastors. I will not dispute the fact that many are misbehaving. Many have done so many terrible things. Many have even caused the downfall of a lot of God's children. That is a fact. That is the truth. Uh, the truth. But the, the 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 bigger truth is that not all pastors are evil. The Bible says, "Because iniquity shall abound, the love of many shall wax cold." Iniquity shall abound. Not only iniquity that takes place in the clubs. Not only the iniquity that takes place in hotels. Iniquity in the house of God. Iniquity in the house of God. There are a lot going on. And like I said in the previous video that these men are agents of darkness. The devil have sent them just to, to destroy uh, the very foundation that caused so many their lives to lay. The devil wants to destroy the very foundation of Christianity that was laid at the expense of people's life. So... That's why he, he has empowered his people. He has empowered his men to come and bring the church to disrepute through their actions and their evil deeds. 
the love of many shall was called because of iniquity because of iniquity because of iniquity let me tell you i met a man one day and this man told me straight to my face he says he said that he loved he, he loved me as a person he loved my spirit and the words that i preached really touched him but uh, he said he's sorry to disappoint me that nothing will make him enter church he will not go to church ever again in his life he has even told his family that no more church they rather sit in the house and pray and i asked him sir but why uh, did you make such a, a decision he told me that in his previous church his his very last church actually that they loved their pastor so much and they supported him they bought him the first car bought him the second car bought him the third car he was driving all the three cars but his assistant pastor his assistant pastor was striking to church and sometimes he takes uh, taxis he, he, sometimes he would take taxi to church and the brethren began to question themselves what's really going on here is this pastor so selfish that he cannot or he could not give his uh, assistant one of the the, the cards even the smallest one even the smallest one so because of the selfishness of that pastor he left the church that's an iniquity men and brethren i am a pastor and i know what sacrifice is i know how to appreciate those who labor with me how could somebody have three cars all to himself but the other person who was always there when he's not around ministering to people doing all the all the work in fact the assistants uh, the assistant did uh the, the uh, greater work he was doing greater work in that ministry than the so-called head pastor that was what this elderly man told me this man could not even give him one car is is not right this is iniquity greed 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 selfishness a lot of people are seeing these things people are not stupid i tell my fellow pastors people are not stupid let's do the right thing let's let's do what is right let's preach the word let us let us live an exemplary life i said some time ago in my post that the only gospel a lot of unbelievers are interested in is your character is your lifestyle that is the only gospel they want to hear that is the only gospel they are interested in your character your lifestyle no matter what you say many has uh, trained themselves to uh, receive messages in this manner no matter what you preach no matter what you say they will accept the word of course you're quoting the Bible and saying things that are written in the Bible. But what they want to see is your character. What they want to see is your character. By their fruits, you will know them. You can't tell anybody that you are on your way to heaven, that you are a true child of God, that you are, you are, you are something, something in the body of Christ. But your character says otherwise. There is iniquity in the church today and as a result many believers are falling away the love of many are growing cold the love of many are growing cold what are the pastors what of the pastors that has been uh, spotted in the clubs what of the pastors that travel out of their provinces to another province to a place where they are not well known they are not known in fact where they believe nobody nobody knows them and the kind of life they live there 
the kind of life they lived there, fiddling with girls and women. But in their mind, nobody is seeing them. Nobody saw them. Nobody saw them. They could do whatever they want anyway and get away with it. There's nobody that, nobody knows, nobody knows us around here. So why not? Iniquity. Now, when a young believer spots such a, 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 a shepherd, what do you think he or she would do? Oh, so this man of God is fooling us. This pastor is fooling us. Ah, now I understand. This whole thing is a hustle. He's hustling using Bible. I will never go to church again. I know so many uh, people. I've met so many sisters, for example. So many sisters who were repeatedly used by men of God. So-called men of God. Not everyone is called by God. Like I said in the video yesterday. You should go and watch it and hear what I'm saying. There is something going on that a lot of people are not mindful of. There is something going on against the church. That is why pastors are making headlines. That is why everybody is condemning the church. People are backsliding. People are backsliding. And it breaks my heart. If I feel this way because of this, how much more God? The scripture says, there is joy in heaven over one soul that repents. There is happiness, gladness, jubilation, celebration in heaven over one soul that repents. When a soul falls away, the joy turns to sorrow. Heaven begins to mourn. Heaven begins to cry for just one soul. How much more? The greater number of people that are falling away because of the iniquity they have sinned. Because of the iniquity they have sinned. Many years ago, around in 2007, in 2007, I served in a certain church. I was there with all of my heart doing the work of God. I took everything, you know, as my personal uh, uh, responsibility. I made sure I did everything I was supposed to do beyond anybody's expectation. I was so dedicated. I was working hard in the kingdom of God, doing all of that, recruiting people, young men, you know, everybody. We were doing the work. Of, we were all out for the gospel. We were all out for, 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 for the work of God. But one day, the Lord opened my eyes in a revelation. And in that revelation, I was standing at the entrance of the church. And a voice spoke to me and said, look into the auditorium. Look into the auditorium. Then, standing there, I looked. I looked into the auditorium towards the altar. You won't believe what I saw. I saw a lot of naked women walking up and down the altar. Walking up and down the altar. Walking up and down the altar. And I didn't understand that. I said, what could be wrong? All these women, naked in the house of God, in the same church where I found myself, what's going on? When the Lord, uh, uh, when the when the when the vision ended, I got up from bed, I prayed. I said, "Lord, what is this? What if what is this? Open my eyes, show me exactly what is going on. I don't want to be in the wrong place. Lord, open my eyes." I prayed some prayers. I fasted. I waited on the Lord. Do you know? About one month after. I came to church and I began to hear, you know, people were making, uh, you know, remarks towards the church and people were just talking about the pastor, the senior pastor at that time. 
that he was caught red-handed with the church secretary secretary or receptionist that he was caught red-handed with the lady he could not deny it and apparently the deed had been going on for a long time i said oh is this what god was trying to tell me in that revelation men and brethren that same week i left the church i left the church uh, many would say i'm not supposed to 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 have left like that uh, I, I i should have uh, uh, you know uh, correct i should have corrected some of the things that were it was not only him to be honest with you it looks like these things were going on you know had been going on for a long time without my knowledge but on that very day god exposed the same thing and after i left uh, apparently the, the the spirit of the lord was not there anymore i had to go the iniquity that took place in that church led to the backsliding of so many brethren it led to the backsliding of so many brethren because iniquity shall abound the love of many shall was called iniquity shall abound the love of many shall was called look at gospel singers dressing like harlots in front of the camera gospel singers what message does that send to the girls in the church what message does that send to the girls in the church iniquity 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 the world is now beginning to influence the church and this is very dangerous this is very dangerous the love of many shall was called for the sake of iniquity for the sake of iniquity all the gossip all the gossip that takes place in the church is enough to cause somebody's love to was called somebody once said she left her church because of too much gossip ah the gossip in the church is too much another person took to social media and said that church folks they gossip a lot once you enter they start looking at you not because they are admiring you but because they are looking for something to say something to to to, to talk about iniquity will lead to the love of many was in code there's massive backsliding going on people of god i want you to know about this there are so many pastors so many brethren who are no longer in the faith because of what so many of them have seen i bless god for some of uh so some 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 pastors who are actually some brethren who are actually speaking out on the things they saw who did not fall away from faith because of what they saw a lot of them a lot of them a lot of them there is this other uh pastor zimbabwean pastor that was once in eastern cape but now he's in durban and uh he, he's, he's 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 all out to expose what he saw what he saw his experience with some of these so-called uh, high-profile men of god and prophets he's all out to expose these things i bless god for his courage i thank god for this uh this this young man the truth is that not everyone that entered in the same clique with him saw what they were doing to be wrong a lot of them are there still doing the same thing till today till today still doing ministry with gimmicks and lies and paying people to come and uh, and uh, and uh, perform stage managing miracles arranging prophecies a lot of them are still doing it and they're enjoying it but this guy stood out and said never this can never happen i bless god for him him as far as i know 
is one of the in fact he's one of the people in the forefront of exposing all the abuses and all the lies and all these criminals in the body of Christ that has led to massive backsliding of many massive backsliding of many I heard of another girl who was crying that her uh, prophet a prophet slept with her how could her father in the Lord do this kind of a thing she was crying and trying to you know um, get uh, justice for what was done to her people were shutting her down shutting her up that she's accusing the so-called prophet that she's a liar she's an agent of darkness sometimes you should allow people to speak listen we have been quiet for so long we've been quiet for so long i personally has been quiet for a long time and i can tell you this thing has really affected even me as a person it has really affected it has really affected the ministry it has really affected the work before us and we cannot keep quiet anymore we cannot keep quiet anymore so many of us has dedicated partners many of us has dedicated brethren whom god you know was using to to fund the ministry to 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 help us in what we do volunteer to do the work without collecting payment a lot of them a lot of them a lot of them because of all these things happening are no longer like that people that would initially render free services to the church will now uh, demand a, a lot of money for the same thing they they they, they could just uh, do for free and then god will bless them they would demand for in fact, when it comes to church projects, people charge more money. People charge more money when it comes to church projects. Why? Because if you ask them, our pastors are making a lot of money. They are collecting a lot of money. Now, I have opportunity to collect my own from the church. Why will I not? All of these things. All of these things. And if you're a pastor watching me right now, please, please, please join this movement. Let us speak out. Let us let us let us let us help cleanse the church. Order needs to be brought back to the church. Order needs to be brought back to the church. What's going on? What is going on? There are those who are truly called to be prophets. But like we all know, most of these prophetic you know things that are happening here and there, most of them are engineered most of them are arranged most of them are arranged it is time for world based churches to rise again it is time it is time i've been with several pastors several men of god we've been we've been together in several meetings and they are crying about the same thing that their churches are almost empty not because they are not worded not because they are bad shepherds no but because people has been uh lured into these places where it's all about miracle money prophecy and all of that prophecy is good money is good but let me tell you what matters most is the well-being of your soul is the health of your soul is the health health of your soul most of these uh, false preachers out there they take people to renew whatever covenant they had with the, the demons that gave them powers and and the influence if at all they have power at all because most of them the reason why uh, what is happening in their ministry the number and all of that is because of a, a you know proper arrangement like a proper engineering of what they do you know to, to to deceive people a lot of people have mastered that act of deception and people are flooding there not knowing what they're going uh, to see or what they're going to, to witness are uh, all fake it's all fake a lot of people because of these things are falling away the love of money the love of money the love of money has led a lot of people out of the faith when a pastor is not careful with his actions when a pastor is not careful at all forgetting that a lot of people are looking up to him listen if you're a preacher those looking up to you are not only in in in, in your church they're not only your church members a lot of them are 
looking at you, observing you from afar, observing you from afar, and whatever you do, they take that into account. They take that into account. And Christians in general, believers in general, please, let's be careful how we live our lives. Let's be careful how we live our lives. Let's be careful. Because you are the message unbelievers want to see. You are the message the unbelievers want to see. You cannot, you can, you cannot tell me not to drink. When I see you drinking, you are, you, you are drinking, but you tell me not to drink. Oh, come on. Time to lead by example is now. Time to lead by example is now. Jesus said, if anyone should cause any of these little children to sin, it will be better for him that a millstone is hung on his neck and then him thrown into the sea to drown than for these little ones to fall away. So many people, you know what you are saying is not true. Uh, is not true. You know what you're saying is not true. But you go ahead anyway, or you went ahead anyway to tell somebody about it. Look what God said. If you give this money, this amount of money, God is going to do this and that. You know you wanted the money. You needed the money. Not because God said this so, uh, so so and so person should give money or so is it. You wanted the money for your own uh, use. And the person will believe you. Give you the money. Sow the seed. First week, second week, third week, fourth week, a month, two months, one year, two years, three years, nothing happened. And they will label you a liar. They label you because of you. They will call other pastors thieves because of you they will fall away and you are happy you've gained anyway God's punishment is coming upon you if you don't repent if you don't repent if you don't repent if you need money what's wrong uh, with telling somebody straight please I need money I have a financial challenge I have something that I need to do urgently with this amount Please, can you help me? Or just go straight, humble yourself, swallow your pride, and ask, please, I need some money. This is so much. I mean, I need to fix this immediately. And they will help you. Instead of being fraudulent on people. Instead of scamming the people of God. Instead of scamming the children of God. Fellow Christians. Fellow pastors. We must be careful what we do. Because people could lose their faith because of our actions based of our on our action or actions a couple of days ago see we have a prayer group and we fast and pray every tuesday now there is this brother who had been in the prayer group you know for some time and i, I believe because when i check uh, when i check when he joined and you know when he started commenting i could tell that he had he had been in the group for a long time all of a sudden last wednesday he decided to scam the members of the group there are quite a lot of groups anyway not one okay people who pray personally with me uh, i share the prayers with them every tuesday and all of that i used to advertise it on this page i don't know if you're interested send me a whatsapp message and i will Make sure you are added to the group. Okay. So he, he sent a certain message. A fraudulent message to the group. Asking people to take certain actions. You know. That are very, very, very suspicious. So when, 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 when somebody saw that. My attention was called to it. I had to look at the link and all of that. And I knew it was It was fraudulent. It was a scam. So, first of all, he was removed from the group. And I sent him a message. I said, why has the devil filled your heart? 
Why have you allowed the devil to fill your heart in such a way that you want to dupe God's people? Why? I called him severally. He did not pick. After an hour or two, he wrote a message back to me. He said, uh, man of God, that I'm sorry. I don't know. I didn't know what came over me. I, I don't know what happened. It will not happen again. Please, that pray for me and all of that. Pray for me all of it. And when I investigated, just to know what happened. And I came up with, uh, with very, very shocking uh, findings. You see, this is a guy whose experience in wherever he belongs, whichever church he belongs, you know, has led him to gradually, gradually drift away from Christ because of what he saw going on, going on, where he's worshiping. You see, he began to drift away because he saw his pastors praising only 419ers. They are called 419 scammers seem to be the people that his pastor gave more attention to people that is obvious they are criminals those are the people the pastor was praising more the pastor gave gave them or always give them much attention in the church because they were bringing more money a lot of them are drug dealers a lot of them uh, scammers frosters they dupe people and they bring money to church the pastor will pray for them so that the person they are trying to defraud will end up paying them at the end will end up paying them the money whatever they wanted from that person and this brother was seeing all of these things he was seeing all of these things and he said no now, this is too much. So if my pastor is condoning this act, it means it's fine. Let me take my chances. That was what led him to that group to come and defraud people. I thank God that the soul was won back. I spoke to him and I believe, I believe, I believe he will never be... Uh, involved with such a thing again so because of iniquity a lot of people are backsliding and this is exactly why people are uh, being separated why people are separating from the love of God because of what they are seeing because of these things happening it's exactly why people are being separated from the love of God now I don't intend to make this message very short how do you keep the love of God, your love burning like fire? How do you keep it burning? See, the book of Hebrews chapter 12, hallelujah. Hebrews chapter 12 verse 2 has something to say. Hebrews chapter 12 verse 2 says, Looking unto Jesus, the author and finisher of our faith, who for the joy that was set before him endured the cross despising the shame and is set down at the right hand of the throne of God looking unto Jesus our perfect example who endured everything that was done to him looking unto Jesus our Lord and Savior the reason why people are backsliding the reason why people are doing all these things, not minding the consequences, is because their eyes are not on Jesus. They are looking at somebody else. They are looking at a human being that is full of errors and mistakes. That is why their love is going very, very, very cold. That's why their love is going very cold. The Bible says, looking unto Jesus, the author and the finisher of our faith. Fix your eyes on Jesus. Fix your eyes on Jesus. 
fix your eyes on Jesus not on a human being fix your eyes on the Lord fix your eyes on the Lord don't look at who is not doing it well don't look at who is apparently in hell already look unto Jesus he is the Lord of your soul there is no other person that died for you except Jesus there is no other person that gave his all for you except Jesus look up to him look up to him do not look at what is happening yes pastors are being called out these days a lot of things are being said about pastors a lot of a lot of things are being said about ministry about the church so many comments with regards to offering and tithe and a lot of things don't look at anybody look at jesus look at jesus your pastor is a human being your evangelist is a human being your prophet is a human being and they can make mistakes don't look at anybody look unto jesus that way your faith will be preserved that's the way you will never lose your faith you will not lose your crown your love will not grow cold look up to jesus look up to jesus so i'm going to bring this message to a close right here it's my prayer that in all these things you will never lose your faith your faith will not fail in the name of jesus christ the love of god the love of god in your heart the love of god in your heart will never grow cold your love for the things of god will never diminish it will never cool off your love brethren we are in the last days I just want us to know once again that the devil's hour is almost up he's doing everything in his power to get the souls of men into the lake of fire the devil must not have you the devil must not deceive you the devil must not take you along with him to hell I pray for you in the name of Jesus that on the day of judgment these words you've had will not be used against you in the name of Jesus may the Lord strengthen you may the Lord strengthen you may your faith be strengthened may your faith fail not in the name of Jesus may your faith fail not you are blessed you are blessed in the name of jesus christ i pray concerning every need of your hearts that god may grant your need i pray against whatsoever or whosoever is trying to separate you from the love of god may the lord rebuke them may the lord rebuke them may the lord rebuke them in the name of jesus christ i bless you i bless you i bless you in jesus mighty name i pray amen and amen hallelujah now, this is chelsea doze and i'm grateful to god that you stayed with me to the end of this video be blessed and feel free to share this message if you find it useful and resourceful god will bless you i'll see you again tomorrow morning for our prayer for the new week god bless you and bye for now